Warning. Channel Robozoid contains adult language, adult content, strong opinions, and verbal brutality. Viewer discretion is advised. What's up, everybody? It is I, the Robozoid, your semi-likable and occasionally tolerable curmudgeon of the YouTube airwaves. And let me just say that uh, comedian Jerry Seinfeld, he did an awesome thing. He took on this loser, uh, Peter Pencilneck, or whatever the hell his name is, from BuzzFeed, and uh, he just destroyed the bastard right there in front of an audience, an audience of predominantly white people, which is what Peter Pencilneck was bitching about. So Seinfeld decided he was not going to play that game. He was just not going to go there with this guy, and he didn't even want him to go there. So quite frankly... <laughs> he just handed his balls to him in a little tiny sack, which I'm sure they are anyway. So, to, if you'll pardon the 90s cliched expression, and since he went there, let's go there. Talk to. I have noticed that most of the guests are mostly white males of 22 episodes. Yeah, let's had. get into that. No, I... <laughs> But you, you take a look over here, Peter. What do you see? A lot of, a lot of whiteies. What's going on here? But, but I, oh, this really pisses me off. But well, go no, ahead. No, no, I, I, really pisses me off. People think it's it's the census or something. I mean, this has got to represent the the nervous laughter pie chart of, of of America. Who cares? It's just funny, you know. Funny is the, is the is the world that I live in. You're funny, I'm interested. You're not funny, I'm not interested. Okay. And, and I have no interest in gender or race or anything like that, but everyone else is kind of with their little calculating, is this the exact right mix? You know, uh, I, I think that's, uh, to me, it's anti-comedy. Didn't you say that you originally conceived of... I guess the purpose of this interview was really to pitch the Seinfeld reunion, uh, which featured, as far as I could figure, at least three of the original cast members, Jerry Seinfeld, um, Jason Alexander, and that fat guy who plays Newman. I'm sorry, I forgot his name. But the important thing is that this guy, Peter Loria, uh, or as we call him, Pencil Neck Peter, uh, he really got his ass handed to him because he asked a stupid question about why so much and why no diversities. When, well, Jerry cleverly struck back with, look around you, Peter. White people, of course, because white people are usually the target audience for his sitcom. They always have been. And by the way, why should we care how many blacks or Hispanics or gays are in a sitcom? Does that matter? Comedy is comedy. And as long as you have the talent, it shouldn't matter what race you are. But you know these lefty bastards. They have to make a big stink about race. Everything is about race to them. If that's all they can see, then that makes them the real racists. Good for Jerry Seinfeld. He wasn't going to fall into the trap of, well, you got to have more diverse people. Well, let me do that again. You got to have more diverse people uh, in your shows. It's all white people. Where's the, where's my diversity? Yeah, I'll tell you where my, my, where my diversity is. My diversity is up your ass and around the corner, Petey. I mean, Seinfeld works with whoever he wants to work with, whether, you know, as long as they're talented, no matter what color they may be, black, white, brown, yellow, purple, blue, or even, uh, or even slightly turquoise. But Seinfeld wasn't going to have any of that. And God bless him. I mean... I gotta be honest with you, I never really watched his uh, 90s sitcom that much. I mean, there were a few episodes I really liked. I mean, everybody knows the puffy shirt one, but the one that stuck out for me was Frogger. You know, George Costanza's obsession with saving his high score on that one Frogger arcade game. But anyway, that's neither here or there. Um, and of course, this is an older story, so... Yeah, these things usually hit X or uh, whatever they call it now, uh, usually after the fact. But it's still an interesting story, and uh, I can't give enough props to Seinfeld for basically standing his ground, sticking to his guns, and just telling this, uh, this woke pencil neck 
from BuzzFeed, which I thought was actually gone now. I thought that was a thing of the past. Uh, he just gave him his comeuppance about my diversities. You know, not everything has to have a black or gay character in it. I mean, having watched a lot of 90s sitcoms, most notably Will and Grace, I've come to find that gays are not very funny. And let me give you some examples of some great sitcoms that actually were funny. But before I do that, eh, I might as well give you the stats again on what Seinfeld actually did to shut Peter Pencilneck up. But if you read the article, essentially what Seinfeld is saying here is that everything that Peter, uh, that Peter Pencilneck from the defunct BuzzFeed, well... This is an older interview, which probably explains why BuzzFeed is defunct now. Uh, but in any case, well, he says, well, here we go again with the whole PC nonsense and rhetoric. And, of course, he does mention, take a look around you, Peter. The audience here is white. Yeah, he's white and Jewish himself. So I don't understand what the problem is. I mean, let's face it. The last great sitcom to actually even star a black family was, of course... My Wife and Kids, starring Damon Wayans. That was actually the last truly funny black sitcom that was ever out there, because, let's face it, blackish didn't work for me. Everybody Hates Chris. Well, I tried to give that one a chance, because I like Chris Rock, but this one just fell flat for me. Everybody Loves Raymond took a while for me to really get into, but once that show found its footing, it actually was pretty funny. Woman-oriented sitcoms just didn't do it for me. Sorry, I can hear a lot of you women getting angry at me, but let's face the facts here. Women just are not as funny. So really, you had great sitcoms. Then, I think by the time, I think by the time the millennium hit, you had some not-so-great sitcoms. I mean, yeah, you had a few that I have mentioned, like, for instance, My Wife and Kids, which was actually a good black sitcom. Blackish? No. Everybody Hates Chris. I tried to give that a shot, but eh, it just didn't do it for me. Um, you did have other sitcoms, of course, like Last Man Standing with Tim Allen, which was really funny. But then, of course, ABC found out that he was a Trump supporter, so they yanked him. Luckily, I think he was picked up again by Fox. And uh, that's just the way it is. I mean, that's the politics of the whole game. It sucks. It's ridiculous. And it doesn't make any damn sense at all. But, again, getting back to the point here, Jerry Seinfeld, he stuck to his guns. He made it very clear that he didn't care about my diversities, he wasn't concerned about, uh, he wasn't concerned about casting an all-black cast or casting uh, whatever race cast. No, he just cast the best, the most talented, and the funniest people out there. And that's really what makes a truly great sitcom. You know, race shouldn't even matter. But to the left, like this idiot, Peter Pencilneck of BuzzFeed, that's all that matters. That's all they can see. And in the end, I think that's what makes them the real racists, because they only ever look at everything through the prism of race. That's all they care about. That's all the guilty white liberal ever thinks of is race. I mean, that's why so many minorities end up voting for these phonies. But in the end, they promise them everything and deliver nothing. So they get screwed over by the Democrats' false promises. And, well, the legal, the legal immigrant, or even, let's say, black people who work hard, get screwed over the most by that nonsense. And, of course, we whites are getting screwed over because we're the ones losing the jobs to the illegal aliens. So, really, it's a zero-sum game. The left have no leg to stand on. They should know that. They don't. And, of course, this idiot, you know, Peter, whatever his name is, Peter Loria. I think of the horror movie actor Peter Lorry when I say his name. Well, he's just a doucher. What does he know? He's a complete dolt from what I thought was a defunct, uh, from what I thought was a, de de a defunct, oh, I got it, I got it, a defunct YouTube channel. And, uh... That's about it, really. That's all there is to it. So if you like this video, subscribe to this channel. You know, push that like button, of course. Hard! And make sure you're still subscribed. YouTube is unsubscribing some of my subscribers without their knowledge. 
Also remember that wokeness is weakness. That's very important because apparently Seinfeld knows this, but Peter Pimpleneck doesn't. Also remember then that, well, that, of course, there's power to the people, which we've got to have, and the power to the music in the streets, and that is the music of our voices in Uprise and Revolt. See you all in another video. Peace.